Many studies have been published over the years attempting to assess the environmental impacts of various diets, and over and over and over again we see a vegan diet come out on top. Of course you can find outliers, right, like a vegan eating mostly exported pineapple or something, but your basic balanced vegan diet causes significantly less environmental damage than your basic omnivorous one. Yet we still see headline after headline suggesting things aren't that simple. Veganism might not be the most sustainable diet. This new robust study says, uh, no. No, it is. There is a strong relationship between the amount of animal-based foods in a diet and its environmental impact, including GHG emissions, land use, water use, eutrophication, and biodiversity. Dietary shifts away from animal-based foods can make a substantial contribution to reduction of the UK environmental footprint. Like I said, we already know this. Many studies have modeled vegan diets, compared them to omnivorous ones, and come to virtually the same conclusions. But in this study, makes it a little bit different they didn't just model a vegan diet. Modeled dietary scenarios may not reflect true dietary practice, and modeled environmental and health outcomes can be strongly affected by assumptions made by the modelers. Instead, they used real-world food data from the Epic Oxford study. Five, no, not 5,000, 55,000 participants, 55,000 different food frequency questionnaires completed by real UK vegans, vegetarians, and omnivores. And the results speak for themselves. GHG emissions, no comparison. Land use, no comparison. Water use, no comparison. Eutrophication, which is basically runoff that increases plankton, which then decreases the level of oxygen in the water and kills animals, no comparison. Biodiversity, now meat eaters do actually get the win here. No, they don't. Of course they don't. No comparison. For the 20-year global warming potential, all footprints were greater, and the relative difference between vegan and other footprints was even more pronounced. High meat eater diets were 5.1 times greater than vegan diets. One caveat is that the Epic Oxford study, this data, is a little dated now. These FFQs were completed back in the 90s, between 93 and 99, I think. The vegan food scene has certainly changed since then. We definitely have more alternatives available. It might be that vegetarians and vegans today eat more mock meats and coconut oil cheeses than they did two to three decades ago. Updating our analyses using more timely data will provide evidence of whether trends in new meat and dairy alternatives have affected the environmental impact of plant-based diets. Even if vegans today do eat more processed alternatives, it's unlikely to affect the results much at all. Remember, mock meats are made from vegan staple foods. They're made from beans and grains, mostly soy, pea, wheat. And just because a soy burger comes in plastic packaging doesn't mean that its impact is equal to that of a beef burger. Which is exactly what the research on this has shown. For one thing, packaging makes a tiny difference. You can see that represented by the gray bars. And plant-based meat has a lower carbon footprint than most animal products. I will say this until the end of time. Buying organic or buying locally to save the environment is a waste of time. Transport is a small contributor to emissions. For most food products, it accounts for less than 10%, and it's much smaller for the largest GHG emitters. In beef from beef herds, it's 0.5%. Processing, transport, retail, and packaging mostly account for a small share of emissions. And this new study that we're talking about comes to the same conclusions. They actually use this same data. It's from this huge 2018 meta-analysis of 38,000 commercial farms in 119 countries. Food type, not production or location, is what matters. Despite substantial variation due to where and how food is produced, the relationship between environmental impact and animal-based food consumption is clear and should prompt the reduction of the latter. You might have noticed earlier from the figures that I showed from the study that the researchers split the omnivores up into three categories, low meat eaters, medium meat eaters, and high meat eaters. And you might be surprised how they define a high meat eater. It doesn't mean like carnivore, doesn't mean a pound a day. It means 100 grams of meat or more per day. 100 grams is 3.5 ounces. It's a serving. So overall, this is nothing new. Again, lots of high quality studies have modeled this and come to the same conclusion. Not that we even really need studies for this. Beans and grains cause less environmental damage than meat 
eggs and dairy and feeding beans and grains to animals and then eating those animals instead of just eating the beans and grains is inherently inefficient. It's inherently more resource intensive. It really is not complicated unless your vegan diet consists of exotic fruit and lettuce and palm oil or your omnivorous diet consists of invasive lionfish and oysters, then a vegan diet is going to come out on top every time. So why do we keep fighting it? Why do we keep falling for headlines like these and bullshit practices like regenerative agriculture? Because we don't want to give up eating animal products, but we also don't want to admit that we should. And so we latch on to these ludicrous claims that in order to save the environment, we have to farm animals, actually. Otherwise, you have to be like this guy and say you just don't care. As of right now, I don't care. 1% about any of the issues vegans bring up. The good news is you can make a big difference without giving up meat, right? The more animal products you eat, the worse your impact, but the reverse is also true. The less you eat, the better your impact. The less your impact, the fewer your impact. <laughs> and there are ways for vegans to improve too, right? Foods like chocolate and coffee and palm oil, not exactly environmentally friendly. To be clear, going vegan is not enough. Even if every single person on the planet ate a vegan diet, we would still see huge environmental damage from transportation, from construction, concrete, pretty awful. But the opposite is also true. Other means to reduce the environmental impact of the food system, for example, technological advances, closing yield gaps, reducing food waste, will not be enough without major dietary change. We have to eat significantly less animal products, and really, our governments should be trying to help us do so. The UK has a legal commitment to a 78% reduction in GHG emissions by 2035, and yet, as the researchers note, the government's Eat Well Guide, the dietary guidelines they promote to citizens, are not compatible with the proposed downscaling of planetary boundaries for food production. If the UK population consumed the diet recommended by the Eat Well Guide, it would not stay within boundaries for GHG emissions, water use, land use, and eutrophication. America's guidelines, my plate, they aren't compatible either. It's really good to see the researchers take a pretty firm stance here in terms of recommending nations adopt sustainability. They incorporate sustainability into their dietary guidelines. We can't just look at the nutrition of the food if we care about humans, right? <laughs> the health of the planet is part of public health. So that was the study. Really well done. I enjoyed reading it. Maybe that's a weird thing to say, but I don't know. That's what gets me going. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please do like the video if you did and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload. Thank you so much to my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do post two exclusive videos there a month for $5 plus patrons. So these are videos I mean, I'm assuming you know what exclusive means. I don't know why I'm explaining it, but yeah, they're videos that I do not post to the main channel. One is a vlog and the other is a controversial topic that's unrelated to veganism. I just posted July's on there. I've also been doing some bird content. <laughs> I keep seeing hummingbirds outside. I sit out in the morning. Can I just say that's the beautiful thing about being in the Pacific Northwest is that even in August, it is August now, July, August, like middle of summer, I can go out in the morning and I have to put my little sweatshirt, my little flannel on because it's a bit chilly. Like there's no, there's no, that doesn't exist where I'm from. That does not exist in the South. So yeah, I've really been loving going out in the morning and doing work on my laptop and I have my phone. I specifically have my phone with me now. So when a bird, a hummingbird, a little hummingbird shows up, I can record it and share it with my patrons. <laughs> it's exciting stuff. Oh, I do have merch too. And I do have an Amazon store page. And yeah, that's it for me. New video soon. Speaking of Tristan Tate, I did forget, and I can't believe, this is why, ah, this is why when I'm watching longer videos or debates or whatever, I need to stop whenever I have any idea. I need to just write it down really quick. And I didn't, and I forgot to put it in there. But I'll just say it now. His whole thing in the conversation is that he only cares about humans. He doesn't care about animals. Well, I have a whole damn video. <laughs> I made like five years ago now. I don't even know how long it's been. Four people who don't care about animals who only care about people. And it's five reasons why we should still promote, we should still adopt 
a vegan diet. Just like the basic working in factory farms, working in slaughterhouses, not good for people. Living near these facilities, not good for people. They harm the planet, obviously, just talked about that in this video. Not good for people unless you're a climate change denialist, I would guess Tristan is, maybe that's not fair. Zoonotic diseases, not great for people. <laughs> Oh, and happy news. My kids had their dental appointments yesterday and they're all in the green. I love these little printout report card thingies we get. And yeah, everything, everything was good. It was so cool seeing the, well, first they tried to do the bite wings for my four-year-old and the thing was just making them gag. So that, that didn't work. So they just did the front for, for, did I say four-year-old? I meant my six-year-old. They just did the front teeth for my six and my four-year-old. And it was so cool being able to see the adult teeth, the secondary teeth, like right under the little baby teeth. It's pretty freaky. But yeah, they were so good. I thought four-year-old was going to be nervous. They were nervous last appointment, but they were so talkative. They were just talking to the hygienist the whole time. I let them bring a little plushie and uh, they were just talking about their little plushie the whole time. It was so cute. 